Hello everybody, welcome to the Me Time Gamer Podcast, episode number 8. I'm your host, Jonathan Fournier, creator and editor-in-chief of MeTimeGamer.com. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, welcome back if you're if it's not the, your first time listening. If you're new, welcome. Hopefully you'll enjoy. Got a lot of things to talk about this week. Uh, the new releases for uh, March for the week of March 10. We got a, a, a few news items to talk about. Um, we do, we're going to talk about, uh, PS Plus games, PS Plus games for March, a couple, uh, uh, GTA news, uh, Wolfenstein news, Metal Gear Solid, and a couple more things we'll talk about real quick. And, uh, then we'll talk about, uh, for, uh, the ping of the week this week is the Order 1886, my review about it. And, uh, we got a kickstarting it, uh, that uh, I'll talk a bit about later. So, uh, let's start off with the... The new releases for the week of March 10th. So, first game on the list is DMC Devil May Cry Definitive Edition coming to PS4 and Xbox One. We also have uh, Resident Evil Revelation 2 Episode 3 coming for PS4, PS3, Xbox One, Xbox 360, and PC. We have uh, a DLC actually for Far Cry 4 Valley of the Yetis coming to PS4, Xbox One. We also have Ori and the Blind Forest for Xbox Ones and PC. We got Tokyo Twilight Ghost Hunters for PS3 and PS Vita. We got Atelier Shally, Alchemist of Dusk Sea for PS3. And final game on the list for next week is uh, Codename Steam coming for 3DS. So that's that's all the games I was able to find for this week uh, for the full list. For the full list, uh, because some of the new releases are only confirmed a couple of days before before uh, before Tuesday, check out our weekly new releases article posted between Sunday and Tuesday of that week. All right, so let's move on to this week in news. All right, so our first uh, article of news is the. F- the, they finally announced the PS Plus games for the month of March. It actually it came out actually about an hour before uh, before they usually do the updates for the PSN store. So for what we're getting for um, this week, if you haven't already downloaded for the PS4, you get Oddworld, Abe's Odyssey, New and Tasty. We also get uh, Valiant Art, the Valiant sorry Valiant Hearts, The Great War. Uh, if you haven't played that game, I, I didn't get a chance yet, but it, it won numerous awards last year, so uh, it's probably a good idea to check it out if you haven't. Uh, it's a very good indie game, and uh, apparently it's a very touching story too, so I, I've downloaded it to my PS4, and I'm definitely going to try it out when I get two minutes. For the PS3, we have uh, Papo and Yo. That's a older game that I I think a lot of people... It was critically acclaimed when it came out, so... Uh, so yeah, jump on that one. Another game I'm going to try it. It sort of flew under the radar when uh, when it came out, but it's uh, Sherlock Holmes: Crimes and Punishment. Um, that seemed like an enjoyable game. I'm I don't know why, but I keep thinking it might look like a murdered sold suspect or something or in that fashion. So I'll I'll definitely give that one a try. And finally, for the PS Vita. We have Ollie Ollie 2, which is actually a new game for this uh, out next uh, out this week. Uh, Ollie Ollie 2, welcome to Hollywood, Hollywood. Sorry, um, coming to P- PS Vita, and it's actually crossed by the PS4. So you actually uh, you actually get an extra game on the PS4, and actually actually you get another one too. The next one, the last one on the list is Counter Spy, which was also a good game re- re- that was received last year, coming to PS Vita, PS4, and PS3. So it's crossed by on all three P- PlayStation systems. So uh, hopefully you'll get a chance to try at least one of these games. They they seem to, it's a, it's a it's a very good list compared to a couple lists the last couple of months. Uh, a lot, like I would say, uh, ex- except one game that I don't seem fond for right now is Papo and Yo because it doesn't seem like my kind of uh, gameplay. But the rest really seem interesting. Even even Odd World seems very interesting. So. Um, so that's it for the PS Plus games coming out. So hopefully you guys have a chance to check that out. A little next piece of news is um, GTA Online gets uh, adversary mode and, cup- and more alongside the heist coming out next week on March 10th. So less than a week to go before we before we can get our hands on the heist. Rockstar Games has announced a couple new 
f- new features coming alongside the heists on March 10, like I just said. Like, like I just said, of course. Uh, one of the features is adversary mode, which will pit players against each other in a couple of different ways. Uh, so, in the in the press release Rockstar uh, uh, sent out, they uh, they defined three of the modes in adversary mode. The first one is come out to play. So they defined this mode as a a team of three runners just trying to make it home, and a team of hunters are out for blood. Runners are well armed but limited to move movement by foot, while the op- opposing opposition wields free aim shotguns and ride motorcycles or ATVs. Hunters must stay on their bikes and have access t- and have access to unlimited lives, while runners have just one life, but all their weapons available to pick up weapons available to pick off the hunters at w- at will. The next mode uh, you guys can probably try is uh, siege mentality. Uh, up to four players stand their ground, outnumbered but not outgunned, as they fight to survive against up to six determined attackers in a in a, in a in a location defense mode, GTA style. Sorry, uh, attackers have unlimited lives but fight only with sawed-off shotguns. Defenders have full use of all their weapons. The last, uh, the last, uh, the last uh, mode of adversary mode is Hasta La Vista. Uh, the chase is on as a trucker, as truckers in a big rig cab hunt down a team of cyclists. Already off the bat, that looks really interesting. The cyclist's goal is simple. Reach the final checkpoint without getting crushed under the wheels of the pursuing trucks. Without traditional weapons, the truckers must rely solely on their vehicles to crush the cyclists. Meanwhile, the cyclists must harness the maneuver- maneuverability and acceleration of their bikes to evade the trucks while keeping an eye over their shoulder. If one of the cyclists reaches the checkpoint, the cyclist wins. If all cyclists are de- terminated, the trucker prevail. So also they added uh, they added uh, some daily objective where you can get bonus uh, GTA cash. Um, uh, just a couple of the activities are uh, where uh, players have to look out for calls from Lester, Trevor, Ron, and Lamar and help them out in the, like like uh, deviating cops' attentions and that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, if, uh, of course, like every every other week, I forgot to mention that uh, this article you can um, uh, you can go read on uh, metimegamer.com, all the, the PS, uh, PS Plus games, this article, and the next two articles you can go check out on the website. So, yeah, so um, continuing back on the GTA uh, news... Uh, there was actually an update today where um, they they show off in a short 15 second video the first first of five heists you can do uh, with 31 new screenshots which you can go see in that article. Uh, which uh, the first heist is called Humane Lab Heist. So uh, looking at the screenshot, I, I I really can't wait to try the heist out, especially on PS4. The game just looks amazing on PS4, and I can just imagine setting playing this like the heist mode. I, I really enjoyed the heist mode heist mode in story, and I just wish you can repeat the missions multiple times in story mode. But uh, playing with friends is is, really, is also good. So hopefully uh, you guys get a chance to uh, try out the heist coming out next. Try out try out the heists coming out next week. Sorry, I have a hard time talking this week. I got a sore throat, so uh, bear with me here. So that's it for GTA. Next news uh, is uh, uh, Bethesda announced uh, Wolfenstein: The Old Blood. So if there's one game that was um, everybody's lips last year, it was definitely Wolfenstein: The New Order. Uh, it made countless top five lists, and some even gave it their game of the year. While well, Bethesda is capitalizing on this situation and announced today the release of a standalone prequel to the New The New Order called Wolfenstein Old Blood. So there's a trailer in the article you can go check. It's a two-minute two minute trailer. Pretty cool trailer. I haven't played uh, the New Order, but this trailer actually motivates me to maybe try out the, the prequel. Uh, so basically, for the, the Old Blood, you're dropped in, once again, in the boots of BJ Blaskowitz for a two-part story. Part one, named uh, Rudy Jagger and the Den of Wolves, must break into Castle Wolfenstein and find the coordinates for General Det- 
Death's Head compound while facing a maniacal prison warden. Uh, the Dark Secret of Helga von Scharb is part two of BJ's adventures. Uh, after fi finding the coordinates, you are led to the city of Wolfburg, where you must stop a crazed archaeologist that wants to release darkness into the world. So that's so yeah, it's a two two part uh, game. Uh, the prequel will be available to consumers on May fifth for the price of twenty bucks, and depending where you live, it's. Uh, uh 15 uh pounds or uh the the the, uh, the uh, uk uh, currency um sorry i have just the blankets and no mean to offense nobody from there uh it's going to be 20 bucks uh, in euros it's going to be 40 bucks for in uh, australia uh and the game will be playable on uh, ps4 xbox one and pc Uh, if you guys are feeling it tomorrow, uh, actually, well, when I'm going to release, it's going to be Friday. So uh, on Friday, March 6th and Saturday, March 7th at 10.30 a.m., you'll be able to see a live stream of the Old Blood uh, standalone game on Twitch. Uh, the link is in the article if you guys want to go see it. So that's it for uh, that news. Next little piece of news, which I really, I actually went mental on this when I saw that I'm... The next news is uh, Metal Gear Solid Phantom Pain gets some detail for its release. Um, so basically the wait is almost over, now confirmed by Kojima himself. The last installment of the Metal Gear series, Metal Gear Solid 5 Phantom Pain, coming to PS3, PS, uh, PS4, PS3, Xbox One X. Uh, Xbox 360 uh, September 1st and for Steam on September 15th. The game will be will have a so yeah that's dur during GDC they re announced the release dates like I just said and they also announced a $100 uh, collector's edition which I pre-ordered and um, what I found the cool like you'll get you your traditional um, steel box and um, uh, uh, additional game content and uh, I think you do get a soundtrack and uh, cool packaging that comes with it. But the most the thing that looks the coolest is that you get ha a half scale replica of uh, Snake's bionic arm, which looks pretty cool. And I saw um, I follow Kojima on Twitter, and he actually uh, I think in Japan they actually get uh, they actually get the full scale of the arm. I'm not sure what I that's what I heard and don't don't quote me on this, but uh yeah, and that yeah, you can actually all his fingers are movable, you can hold stuff with it and uh, the, the joints are flexible, so it looks pretty cool and like this this is exactly like like the order uh, collector's edition. You get a cool a cool piece of uh uh like a full statue uh, cool statuette and it's they're not they're not charging a lot for it like the game uh like i'll, I'll mention it later the game's only uh sixty dollars before taxes and you pay a forty forty extra dollars and you get an awesome what looks like a leather packaging from the picture but it's just a picture it might not be exactly that but you get a, a cool replica like a half scale arm still pretty big um So you guys will definitely have to check that out. Go check out the picture in the article that I posted. Uh, so if you guys are going to buy, um, if you guys are going to buy uh, Metal Gear Solid, um, there is uh, some cool stuff for you guys on the for. Uh, if we look at um, the for the day one edition content, only for and this is only for physical copy and on PS4 and Xbox One, you get a, a map. A map in the, in the case uh, you get DLC items which is Adam Ska special handgun personal ballistic shield which is silver colored uh, cardboard cardboard box you guys you guys just love the cardboard boxes that like I never played the I never played Metal Gear before but that I watched a lot of people playing and everybody every time somebody starts to talk about Metal Gear those damn cardboard boxes always make it back always make the conversation And then you also, uh, going back on track here, you also get a fatigue for Snake, a blue urban snake costume. And you get the Metal Gear Online XP boost. For the collector's edition now, which I'm pretty hyped for, you get a half-scale replica of Snake's bionic arm. Um, you get the collectible steelbook, uh, behind-the-scene documentary and trailer in the blue, on a Blu-ray disc. You get the map, uh, a map... Uh, In the packaging, uh, the exclusive packaging, 
uh, DLC content. So you, you're getting a lot of DLC content for this. So for you get a you're you're getting a weapon and shield pack, a Win Windurger S333 Compact Special Special Revolver, Adam Scott Special Handgun, Machinen Tech Tetiche Pistol Five West Special Handgun, Raps Short Barrel Shotgun Gold, Personal Ballistic Shield. Personal, uh, and sorry, you got four ballistic personal shield, which one is Oliver Drap, silver, white, and gold. And of course, you gotta, you have to have a cardboard boxes pack, which uh, contains three, three different kinds of cardboard box. Which you got rocky terrain design, all-purpose dry land design, and wetland design. Uh, you get four snake costumes. Uh, so you get one that's uh, black ocelot, gray urban, blue urban, and all-purpose dry land. And some other stuff you get. You get a Venom Snake emblem. And I get, I'm guessing that's in-game. This is all in-game, in right? So, uh, MGO boost. Uh, Metal Gear Online boost. Uh, Metal Gear Online XP boost. Uh, Metal Gear Online items. Metal Gear Rex helmet. AM MRS4 gold assault rifle. And WUS pistol gold. So the game will cost for uh, Xbox 360 and PS3 $50 before taxes. And like I said earlier, it's going to be $60 for PS4 and Xbox One. Um, yeah, and I really can't wait to look out that replica. Sorry I'm, sorry, I'm talking a lot about it, but it really looks awesome in the picture. So I uh, hope we'll definitely check that out when it comes out. Uh, the other little piece of news that we got, these the next two are small, but they're still important. Uh, it's uh, Sunset Overdrive gets its final DL DLC called Dawn of the Rise of the Fallen Machines. Uh, it's coming out on April 1st, and um, basically this DLC will be will feature new missions, quests, challenges, and uh, we'll, we'll also have an, a new energy ball of death tool which will enable to roll around the city getting to a destination quickly and crushing the life out of everything in your path so um you can go there's a trailer out for it you guys can go check that on youtube i don't have it on the website unfortunately but uh yeah you can definitely find that on youtube pretty easily so yeah on to the next little piece of news uh at gdc they announced uh, uh that project morpheus for the ps from sony on ps4 uh, it's coming in the first half of 2016, so early next year. Uh, and they also released a new video explaining, uh, and a blog post explaining all the new features and the upgrades they made to the uh, uh, last year's uh, model. So uh, some of the key, f key changes that they made is the OLED, OLED display. Uh, in exchange for a 5-inch LCD, the new Morpheus VR headset is equipped with a 5.7-inch 1920 by RGB by 1080 resolution OLED display. Uh, the new screen expands the field of view and enables low persistence removing motion blur. It also features a uh, uh, 120 hertz refresh rate. Uh, the previous refresh rate spec has been double for this new prototype, which means games for Morpheus can be rendered at 120 frames per second, which double of what you can get on your PS4 and Xbox One right now. And uh, when combined with the OLED display, high uh, OLED displays high refresh rate, the power of the P and the power of the PS4, the, Mor the Morpheus is able to output amazingly smooth visuals. Uh, super low latency is another uh, key change they made. Uh, what they state in in the uh, in the blog post say they say. Well, Shuhei actually po uh, is uh, uh, leading this article that I'm reading. Uh, they say that uh, we know how critical low latency is to deliver a great VR experience. And we've reduced the latency less than 18 milliseconds, about half of what the first Morpheus proto prototype had. Low latency is critical to deliver a sense of presence, at the same time making the VR experience comfortable to players. So also one of the new key f key changes is more accurate tracking. Uh, to make to make p positional tracking more precise, they've added three l LEDs to the headset. One of the front, two on the side, for a total of nine LEDs LEDs, sorry, to support robust 360 degree tracking. And it also has a new uh, user friendly design. 
You guys can go check that on the blog.us.playstation.com. So uh, that's it for this week in news. Let's move on to what I'm, I've been, I played the last week. Uh, I didn't play much. I uh, finished The Order. You guys can actually check out the review. It's online right now while I'm uh, recording, but I will I will talk about it uh, in a couple of, a couple minutes here. Um, yeah, and I also right before I started recording, I actually played a little bit more of Dying Light. I really enjoy that game. If you haven't picked it up, I can't stress it enough to definitely go try it out. It's uh, like I said, it's definitely in the in the running list for being in the game of the uh, my game, personal game of the year, and. Uh, thinking back uh, that's all i had time to play this week i had a busy week and uh, i've been sick pretty much all week like you probably can hear it while i'm talking so uh, yeah so let's move on to uh to our ping of the week so basically if you guys don't know if this is your first time listening every week i i do what's called ping of the week with which i choose a uh a, a, a certain subject which i feel like talking about and um yeah, I bring it to you guys, whatever it is from an opinion piece about a certain subject, or the last couple of weeks it's been more like impressions and reviews I've been doing. So this week, my rev- for this week, it's, it will be my review of The Order 1886. So before I start, like I said earlier, uh, or did I mention it? It doesn't matter. Uh, if you guys are reading the the article about, the well, the physical, the the article review of the game, I do have an unboxing video because I, I bought the collector's edition, which it looks pretty sweet. For $80, the, statue, the little statue that comes inside is really amazing. It's rigid, and yeah, definitely definitely look look at my unboxing video. And uh, you you can probably, I don't know if you can find more uh, collector's edition, but definitely go check your local shops or, uh, or online. Uh, so, um, so for the basic rundown of the game, it's a... It's a PS4 game. It was released February 20th, uh, and it's developed by Ready at Dawn, and it's published by Sony Computer Entertainment Santa Monica Studios. It's a third-person shooter. It's rated M for Mature, and it's single-player, and uh, you can download it, or you can buy the disc version, of course, because there is a collector's edition. Um... So, if there's one game that got mixed feeling in the past weeks, it's definitely The Order 1886. The game seems to have a polarizing opinion in the game gaming community, both from your reviewers and consumers, which is totally understandable with all the hype hate, slash hate it got before release, including the short game tag it received. Uh, I had the chance to get my hands on the collector's edition on release day, and was really impressed with the quality of the statue that came with the game, which you can check out it on my unboxing video. So for the story, basically the game takes place in Victorian London, 1886. Tana, there's the connection with the title, uh, where his history has taken a different turn centuries ago. The Knights of the Round Table still exist to defend the people of the land. Although not for the same reasons that history books have taught us in this case, the Order stands in, the, in defense of London to protect the people mainly from half-breeds. Adding to this problem, Galahad and the Knights of the, Ra- of the Order must fight off the rebels from destroying this technology-filled city, but is everything as it, as it seems? Galahad must find out what's, what's going on and puts his trust upon old foes to discover the real secrets. Uh, personally, the story really captivated me to want more from the universe that the order uh, the order offers. It has a compelling a compelling plot that has a strong foundation with nice little unexpected twists. Now, here's a couple of things that bothered me about the story. I felt that it was missing an ending that brought more of the story to a close. It does somewhat give you a sense of content, but still feels like it was a bit undercooked. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed the story, but I felt underwhelmed by the lack of some plot points being left open at the end. Now, it does, however, s- set the franchise up, either for the next Order game or a DLC, for a great continuation, but in this case, I must rate, the, uh, rate this story and not what the future holds. I really enjoyed the writing and the acting in the game. It didn't feel bland or out of touch. The game is designed to have a movie-like feel and plays to, and play to it which it does nicely, I would argue. If it was even ever made into a movie, I would definitely go watch it for sure. In any case, the story 
in all its glory does hold up and take a nice as- and takes a nice aspect of history, puts a twist on it, and delivers an enjoyable take on Victorian era, but has a, this small gap that should have been filled with a bit more information or story. Visually, uh, I'll tell you one thing right right from the beginning. This, if this game doesn't get at least nominated for best visual, I'd be greatly disappointed with that award. Uh, it, it, sorry, let me rephrase that. If it, if 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 it if it if it's not included in everybody's best best visual or graphic uh, section of their awards, uh, I would be greatly disappointed. Um, if there's one aspect of that game. If there's one aspect that of that game that got most praise, it's, it deserves, and it deserves all of it, it's the visual of the game. When I think Victorian era, I imagine what the order looks like because it has that dirty, old age, antique feel to the environment. The settings feel, feel authentic and cap, capture the hard times that the, play, the player encounter, encounters during their time in the game. In all the time I played, I only had one time where the frame rate dropped in the tens for about 30 seconds, and it was during a very heavy fire sequence. Uh, besides that instance, graphically the game is flawless, crisp, and very fun to look at. The characters have a nice realism to them and stunning facial detailing. Uh, I, appreciate, I appreciated the horizontal bars that the game implemented and never felt like it, did, it hindered my experience. Uh, if, looking, if we look at the mechanics more of the game, I will say right now that the game has a good chunk of quick time events, but it's not overwhelming. Personally, I found that it had a decent balance between QTEs and actual gameplay during the entire game. I enjoyed the, the covering system it offered, but did get the occasional moment where Galahad unlocked from, co- from cover, leaving me in the line of fire. Another thing that nicked the mechanism was the running. This seamlessly benign feature is held back oddly enough in the order in some areas where running is not activated when toggling the, the analog stick. I don't quite understand the purpose, but I was able to get past the slow hiccup because of the fact that I was looking everywhere for collectibles and didn't really require require me to always be running during these periods. Don't get me wrong, it's only a fraction of the gameplay that blocks running, but when it happens you notice. The order, the order also offers a nice alternative when it comes to lockpicking. Using what seems like an air power tool, the player can compress the lock mechanisms and open the door. Although you don't do it at every corner like some games, I found this technique a nice little refresher compared to similar entities. Uh, for the weapons, the order offers a nice collection of weapons mixed with a couple of nice ones that you get access during uh, the game. <coughs> You get your standard machine gun, pistol, frag, sniper, and so on. But the game has special weapons from you, from your in-game friend Tesla, which uh, it's not a spoiler use feature in some trailers. Uh, my favorite weapon is the termite rifle, which features a two-step approach: shoot the termite in the general area, the general area of your target, of the target, and proceed to launch a sort of Molotov to ignite the termites, which literally melts, melts your enemy. <laughs> pretty uh pretty uh morbid if when you're looking at it morbid when you're looking at it um since the molotov takes longer to reach the target than the termites i always launched the molotov before the termites and created an instant attack with great results a couple other weapons that are not always in the game which somewhat bother me but i understand that it can't always be there are the arc gun, which is uh, which charges up and destroy the enemy, destroys the enemy closest to the general direction you you are facing, facing, and the detonator, a grenade launcher you can remotely detonate at the moment of your choosing. My gib- my biggest complaint about the weapons is that you can't modify any of them, which I get it for the sake of the game. I just think we get spoiled by other games that offer modding option while playing. I really enjoyed the game, the gunplay while playing. And didn't feel like I was unnatural in any means. Collectibles. This is always one of my favorite parts in uh, in games when there is some. Uh, beside the shooting, the shooting side of the order, it offers some collectibles for you for for your roaming for your roam needs roaming needs. Uh, 
the game has phonograph cylinders that give you a small auditory fragment into the world of the order. I think the biggest thing that caught my attention while collecting these things was the fact that I couldn't listen to them while continuing my adventure. You have to go into the menu, select the archive tab, and then select the auto snippet you want to listen to, which then pro- pro- process proceeded to sometimes slowly play slowly play the auto audio while I was already done reading the text that complemented the audio. If we are comparing to other collectibles and other games, we see Bioshock Infinite letting you play the auto while while still performing the things you want to do. Beside that little pain, I enjoyed listening to most of the phonograph cylinders. The other collectibles that you can find in in the game comes in form of items you inspect from newspaper objects, people, and so on. Although this doesn't serve any purpose in the game itself, it was still fun to discover items in the city of London, of London which had a nice detail for some of the items. The only other thing that was a bit of a letdown was the fact that when you're going to redo some of the chapters to collect items, like I did, you can't skip the cutscenes which is kind of a bummer because some of them are really long. Uh, for the audio side, the voice acting complements the characters nicely. Never did I, f- I feel pushed away from a char- uh, certain character due to bad voiceover. Uh, it was always well executed and scripted to perfection. The soundtrack to The Order is composed of several time-appropriate tracks uh, uh, that complemented the game very well. The in-action audio and music really make the experience an all-around enjoyable moment. Even the walking around on different surface types was well done. The audio portion of the game really offers a solid complement to the visuals. Uh, For my final thoughts on the game, overall, The Order 1886 is a game I enjoyed and would recommend recommend playing. The thing that's making me a bit wonky when recommending the game is the price. Is the game worth the the sixty dollars? I bought, like I said at the beginning, I bought the collector's edition for twenty bucks more than your standard game, and was pleased pleased with my purchase. I f- so if we price it out, the statue alone is worth twenty dollars or even more. I would say even more than that easily. You get the steel case, which retails for about ten dollars. That's uh, what what uh, my local shop they actually sold some steel cases for some games. They were about ten bucks each. So then after that, you get the soundtrack, which will we'll give it a price of 10 bucks, and a couple DX, D, DLC suits that, for what they do in the game, are worth, let's say, a good little $5. If we calculate all this together, the game basically comes back to 40, $45, which, in my opinion, seems more of a decent price for this game. Uh, with the story being what it is, I, I would hope that a DLC would be in the works in some way, shape, or form, and help wrap some of the detail up but not finish the game because I, I, I would want to play a sequel to The Order. Personally, I really admired the design of the game and enjoyed the decent mechanics, besides some er- that some areas didn't allow running. Graphically, The Order takes it to a whole n- new level and, and blows pretty much any other games out of the water. If you enjoy an alternative history, a nice story, somewhat of a quick playthrough, impressive visuals, and fun mechanics, this game might be down, down your alley. For my final for my final score, and I really fought over the score. Uh, I gave it an eight on ten. I think I think it deserves it. Fine with with uh, reading my review, uh, re- reading my reviews a couple of times, and um, really thinking about it and playing a bit more. I yeah, uh, I enjoyed it enough to give it an eight out of ten. So hopefully you guys enjoyed my review. Uh, well, let's move on to kickstarting it. So if you're new to the podcast, ki- basically kickstarting it is a weekly article uh, article that I post about a, an indie game. It could be a, a, an indie game found on Kickstarter or similar website. Uh, each week I select one game and talk about it on the podcast, or I, uh, and I write an article that releases at the same time as the podcast. So uh, I make you guys discover an awesome game that you might not have heard of, and hopefully you guys can go help them out if you, if you seem interested in it interested in the game so for this week if you guys heard uh, heard a bit i decided well not heard what game i was choosing but uh if uh, they talked they the, that info came out earlier this week a new ter- toe jam and earl back in the groove game coming out uh no release date of course it's still in the in the funding phase so this is developed by human nature studio 
uh, as of uh, uh, March 5th, there is uh, 4,232 backers. Uh, they need $400,000. And as, as, as of the same date, there is uh, uh, 218000 uh, nine hundred seventy-three dollars accumulated. The funding ends on fair Friday, March twenty-seventh, at three p.m. Eastern Time. So far, it's uh, it, it will be available on PC, Mac, and Linux. And if there's enough funding, uh, it will be come to console eventually. That's what uh, Mr. Uh, Greg Johnson said in the, the videos, the video which you can go see on the Kickstarting it article that will, that uh, that comes with this podcast. Basically, uh, Toe Jam and Earl, Back in the Groom, Groove, is the official sequel to the original Toe Jam and Earl back in 1991. The game features a mix of 2D, 3D animations and features the iconic level design from the original, original game, but better. Toe Jam and Earl's story is the old classic take your friend on a spaceship ride to show them the pla- planet Earth, press the wrong button, the Earth, and the Earth is in millions of pieces. The game will support four-player online multiplayer and couch co-op. Um, personally, I remember having uh, seen some of my brother's friend playing the, the Total Jam and Earl game back when it, I was younger, and really found found I uh, really found what I saw funny. Now, looking at what Greg Johnson has done so far, I I bet fans of the series will be pleased to re-enter the Earth atm- the Earth's atmosphere and relive their childhood memories. Personally, I find that I find I find the art style really amusing and retro, and you still get that funky feeling from the original game. Well, from what I can see so far, so go go help the game out and uh, by backing them at their project, and hopefully, uh, we'll, you'll be able to enjoy this blast from the past. Um, if you would like to get your game to be featured uh, featured on Kickstarting it, please send us an email at kick. Uh, contact at metimegamer.com with the subject title kickstarting it requests all right that's it for this week hopefully you guys enjoyed the podcast i'd like to thanks give thanks to techno acts royalty free music for the intro and outro music also give thanks to uh, mansardian and unfa for the this week in news and ping of the week intro which where where you can find these guys at freesound.org uh, you can find the podcast on Stitcher, TuneIn, iTunes, and Audio Mac. Also, uh, for the last week, since the last last week, I added a lot new uh, a lot of new affiliates. So, which you can uh, you can go check out on uh, metimegamer dot com forward slash aff- uh, affiliates. Uh, I got so I'll just list them quickly here for you, so you guys can um, can see if any of them are interesting to you. I got G2A.com, Play-Asia.com. I got Amazon Canada and Amazon US, which a small small little uh, uh, bracket here. Uh, If you guys guys are listening to this and you would like to shop Amazon US, please do so if... uh, I'm asking you guys for help here because if no one has bought anything yet for the Amazon link for the US and uh, if I don't use it pretty much I'll lose it and unfortunately nobody's going to be able to use it after that If you, so uh, if you guys want to ch- help me out on that uh, it doesn't need to be much you can buy any uh, $1 item and it's still it's still good enough um, and yeah thanks sorry for this little uh, this little interlude there keep going on the list we also have the PlayStation to- Store affiliate link uh, we also have Microsoft Store. We got ThinkGeek.com. We got uh, TFury.com. Uh, we got Uplay Store, Origin Store, the EA Store. There. Uh, we have GameStop.com. We also have uh, Razer headsets for gaming headset. We also have Skull Ga- Candy headset. Uh, you guys can also go check out uh, a link for pa- the Pac-Man game, which is seems kind of funny. But yeah, there I got an affiliate for that. Um, play play Pac-Man. Also have a uh, iTunes link. You know what you guys know what iTunes does. Also got Walmart.ca for you Canada folks listening to this. Uh, and also the last the last if you're reading the podcast or if you're getting uh, if you're looking at the uh, 
the uh, podcast article. I also have the last one on there, which is also, I added at the bottom of the affiliate page. It's a GoFundMe, GoFundMe.com uh, page for Me Time Gamer. So if you guys don't feel like buying anything from uh, from uh, one of the stores on the affiliate page you can and you want to help the website out, you can always do so by going to GoFundMe.com and checking out uh, Me Time Gamer. Uh, you can give anything from one dollar to whatever you feel like it. Everything, everything I collect from affiliates and GoFundMe goes back to help out the website and then make it even better for you guys. This is really a passion project for me, and uh, I really enjoy do it, doing it. So hopefully you guys can help me out and help me keep doing this because uh, I really enjoy doing it. So uh, if you guys have anything to, if you guys have uh, something to say, co like comments, suggestions, critiques, questions, topics for Ping of the Week, or anything else you can think of, you can send me an email at podcast at metimegamer.com. Or if you'd like to place an ad on the podcast, send us an email at, an email at contact at uh, metimegamer.com. If you want to follow Me Time Gamer, you can, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're on WordPress, you can follow the blog. You can uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash MeTimeGamer. You can follow us on Twitter, at MeTimeGamer, all one word. <clears throat> Sorry about that. You can check us out on YouTube, where you can find my unboxing video of the Order 1886. You can find out the unboxing video of the Triton headset that I, uh, that I bought about a month or so ago. And a lot of cool new, you can find the podcast there, the uh, video uh, format. There's no uh, actual video of me recording the podcast, but you can, uh, I usually post uh, the banners from the articles that I do on there. And yeah, you can, if you, if you guys like looking at a video or something like that, you guys can check me out on Twitch. I haven't been on Twitch about a week now, but uh, I, like I said, I've been busy. So playing games and uh, being sick at the same time, it's not always an easy thing to do. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, you can on Twitch. It's twitch.tv forward slash me time gamer. And you can also check us out on Reddit. So reddit.com forward slash r forward slash me time gamer. And uh, yeah, that's it for this week, guys. Hopefully, you'll have fun. Go play some awesome games. A lot of new games coming out next week. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully, you guys come back next week. Listen to this podcast again and enjoy. Yeah.